Hello everybody, how you doing? Cedric and Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we will be reviewing WWE's Clash at the Castle in Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, so look, I guess we're going to just jump right on in this. The first match is for the Undisputed Championship. It's I Quit match. And we was wondering why this was on first. Now, I can't do this like SmackDown is. Something inside me was like, just... Just take notes, you know, just, I couldn't help it. I could not help it, but I did. So if you don't like the notes version, let me know, make a consensus, and I can just do the whole who won, who lost, and if we like the match, you know, move on. Um, so why would they do this match first? The reason they would do this match first, and it's very strategic, it's strategic. Um, this has no build up really. This has no build up. It's just AJ was like, I'm gonna retire. Although that was kinda snuck on us, and then I'm gonna hit you during you celebrating me and beat you down, I'm gonna get my boys on you and, and you mad, I'm mad, I'm gonna talk trash next week, you know, more trash talk, and then next week we gonna fight. Sometimes it's all the build up you need. <laughs> yeah, and that's true. But AJ already had a match with him. Yeah, and lost. You know, Cody is still going on time of champion. He's a young champion. He ain't had the belt that long. He got to get some wins under his belt. There you go. And AJ, because exact this is what Zimo and I'm sure others. Would, buy, would, would agree the WWE don't build wrestlers well so <laughs> he didn't have any other challenges <laughs> so you gotta go back to AJ it's sort of like Undertaker and Shawn Michaels over and over Rock and Austin over and over Michaels and Austin so it's gonna be Undertaker Michaels Rock Austin Triple H Triple H and then every once in a while you know like you know Mick Foley or somebody the same main event over every and over. show, oh man, that's that that got so boring. It was yeah, you you see that mess for for a year, then you know what the next year is starting off as you like I'm I'm done, and then somebody else new gets in the mix, then it's the new person in the mix, over and over again. Yep, forty five minutes of a two hour show devoted to talking. Speaking <laughs> of talking. <laughs> <laughs> so okay I quit match I quit rules no DQ yada yada we got this so AJ Styles versus Cody Rhodes Cody Rhodes the champion and these are my notes and as always you feel free to just jump on in there when you feel like it All right. Uh, if you have a memory or something like that so AJ looked like he's coming to a fight which was good. AJ made me forget for a moment that it was all a work. The fans are really into Cody's intro. They sing his song because why? They're trying to outdo Leon Franz. Everybody for all time will be trying to outdo Leon Franz. Oh yeah, I'm still doing it. That's, that's, that's why I said, oh yeah, I'm still doing it because I'm, I'm like, no, nah, they're going to try to outdo Leon Franz, you know, or Franz, whichever you want to pronounce it. Uh, they chant you know, Cody, Cody Rhodes, Cody, Cody, what they doing that? A lot. The entire match. They come out as in the house of fire. Cody lands a punch, sells his hand. It drew my attention to it. And I realized it's wrapped like Dustin. Dustin had his hand wrapped like that for a while. So maybe maybe that's trying to be a Rhodes trademark or something. Yeah, he's, Cody always has his, arm, his hand wrapped like that, even in AEW. I had not ever noticed it. I had because it looked out of place. It was never anything about a hand injury. Sometimes it'd be all loose, about to fall off. <laughs> I never know because I'm not, I'm just not watching. I hear it. I see the end and I move on. <laughs> I just didn't watch. Yeah. They fight to the back where Cody slammed AJ's head into the wall with zero daylight. Yeah. It was good. Mm -hmm. Back in the ring, Cody applies a figure for a grapevine. That's the original name of it. Where AJ is asked if he quits to a no, AJ gets the rope break. So here's a spot. Cody and AJ spill over the top rope with vertical suplexes, crashing into a heap on the floor. That was good. That was good. 
Um, we saw Cash, Wheeler, and, and others do that in AEW. Cash, Cash did it the best. Um, Cash mm, great. Maybe Dax. I don't know. AJ yeah. hit a brain buster on the announce table and asked if Cody quit to a no. On the note, AJ hits Cody with the microphone. Yeah, that was funny. Yep, it, and it made sense. AJ trash talks Cody's family, giving a well, his mom giving good distraction for Cody to cut himself. I mean, it was more than obvious to us anyway. Yeah, it, I, I, I'm tired of the mother angle. I'm yeah. tired of the mother angle. I'm, I'm tired of the girlfriend angle, the sister. I'm, Just, I'm tired of yeah, all it's, that. Yes, it's, it's old, it's, it's boring, old. it's dumb. And she's going to slap him and ooh, you got to slap. You, you know it's coming. Uh, so Cole calls, Michael Cole calls it the crimson mask and I think JR should so, socially sue him. It was more like a crimson eye patch. Yeah, more, more like that little pat smear on the head. Just a little smearing of, of red. After the Ushi Groshi, Cody has to answer no a couple of times. AJ tries to uh, head slam on the step, but Cody wasn't close enough and AJ looked like it too. <laughs> he tried to throw his head right on the steps. Cody was like, I get this close, but I'm not going to get that close. And AJ kind of looked like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fans chant, fuck you, AJ. It's a change from several minutes of Cody, Cody Rhodes. Yeah. AJ hit a stiff DDT and Cody must answer the question to a no. And the fans go back to cheering. AJ uh, gets a chair from under the ring. And the fans chant, they want tables. God damn. I was like, you know what? Y'all fans are just letting me down. Y'all fans let me down. Y'all got to stop. You know, y'all, you know, why does everything got to be table this, table that? It, it, it don't, don't it get boring? You know, someone get put through a table. You got put through a table. At this point, you can tell there's no damage being done, but for some reason. So the same people that you just asked if it gets boring to them chanted Cody, Cody Rose for 20 minutes. No, it doesn't. Grog will always be a frog. Oh, yeah. I got nothing. Logic is overwhelmed. AJ pilmanizes Cody's head with a double knee drop on the Did chair. You say pilmanizes? Well, yeah. What put is the, pilmanize? Put the, put the chair on the leg and you sandwich it between the, the 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 back and the seat, and then you stomp on the leg of the or the back rim leg of the chair, and it's supposed to allegedly, you know, destroy that part of the body and stuff like that. That's called pilmanizing. Because they done it to Brian Pillman, and I think they messed him up. I think it messed up his throat or something. I can't remember. Okay. I cannot remember. So, y'all, my bad. I am not trying to be a wrestling history guru. I got better things to do in life. <laughs> I know I something remember. happened to Pillman and it messed up his throat. Yes. I can't remember what. I, that might have been one of it. Okay. Because usually that's how something gets adopted into something. Okay. Um, Cody yeah. Barrett was barely able to answer no. AJ uses the kendo stick repeatedly on Cody, who answers hell no. AJ takes the belt off the ref and whips Cody, telling him to say it. He and whooped that mug's ass with that stick and <laughs> with that belt. It was great. <laughs> There's going to be some ass whoopings up in here. <laughs> he whooped his ass. Um, note, I hope this doesn't end by AJ shouting, say it, I quit, and then the ref rings the bell. Okay. I was like, you could, if it happens, you know, okay, WWE, you only do it once. I don't know if they've done it before, but you only get away with it once. NWA did it once. Then you don't do it again. AJ applies a bridging face lock and Cody won't give up. Cody seems to pass out from the hold, but the ref can't get the answer due to Cody being not being able to talk. AJ gets a black bag and our wrestling hearts sink yes until out comes handcuffs like, we oh, felt much better oh great no thumbtacks because i was getting ready to skip it i was like done uh with cody cuffed aj beats on him with rapid strikes to the answer of no aj goes out to cody's mom who slaps him three times before he gets a chair trying to be menacing towards her but instead gets in the ring and Cody's got his hands in front of him, but they're still cuffed. And he hits the, the and, and, and AJ just wails on Cody with the chair bit. AJ wraps the chain around his arm after, I think Cody had got, no, he, yeah, I think he got, 
I know Cody got free, but AJ did wrap a chain around him. Maybe it was a, a spare piece or something. But he prepares the swan dive, and yeah, it was a different. It was a separate pa- sec- separate pair of cuffs they wrapped around his arm. He was going to do the swan dive forearm, but he got hit in the face with the chair and fell off the top rope onto the apron and then onto the t- a table that was Set placed up. on the floor at some point. Yeah. Cody frees himself from the cuffs and goes on the offense. Cody hits his finisher, pauses, hits it again, pauses, hit it again, but this time on the chair. Cody hit the hit the chair way more than AJ could have, but yeah, okay, you know. Then he waves off the ref from checking on AJ. Now my note was that gave the idea that AJ would have said he quit, but he was stopped. That's what that indicates to me. So, yeah, we AJ would have said I quit, but I didn't want you to check on him. That's what it looked like. I get what they was going at, but logically, I'm like, eh, it looks like this instead. Cody cuffs AJ to the middle rope and mercifully wails on him with the chair. To the answer, screw you, Cody Rhodes. Angry Cody gets the steel steps, gets him in the ring, prepares a launch at AJ, who panics and shouts, "I quit! I quit! I quit!" And was looking at Cody like, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. After the match, the fans sing his song. AJ still throws the, well, Cody still throws the, uh, he throws the steps into AJ. While Cody celebrates, Solo Sokoa walks from behind and golf claps. When Cody sees him, the infamous right hand men sneak up from behind and attack. Yeah, I'm sticking with that until they come up with something better. Uh, Owens and Orton come and rescue and the bloodline loses again. The whole bloodline faction just keep losing. They just keep losing. Okay, so before you move on, I'm guessing it's because I have not been there for the... Eh, I'm guessing I haven't been there for the entire rise of Cody to this pinnacle. But I Pinnacle just, of what? I, uh, him having the belt. Oh. I just, I, it, it don't do nothing for me, man. I'm like, okay, he's got it. His, oh. his wrestling's all right. Yeah. The majority of wrestling fans out there couldn't wait for Cody to get it. Can, and then he got it. Then they just say, well, he done had it too long. He can talk. I mean, I just, nah. And then I'm all, nah, about Cody. And then here comes so, Solo. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, from nah to... So, Sikoa. so we got Nyan and Meh, and they start fighting. So Meh and Meh fight to a, huh? Yeah. That's how you feel? And then there was uh, Tamatanga and Tongaloa, which are great no matter what they do. Tamatanga Loa. No matter what they do, <laughs> they're great. Oh, they can do no wrong. They can do no wrong. They can, Wrong can be done to them. But they can, but do, they, they can do no, no wrong. wrong. They didn't lose. Sokoa lost. You know, he's the, was he the brood mare? The, no, the, the captain he's, in he's, charge. Yeah, uh, the one driving the bus. Yes, the tribal chief. There we go. <laughs> oh, that's what you're trying to get at. Yes, <laughs> the tribal chief. He he's the one tribal chief. So it's he lost. It's his fault. <laughs> he, he better go get some tips. He need to get more medicine or something. He need he needs to do some work. He, he needs some work. <laughs> Solo Sokoa looks like an enforcer that cannot enforce. <laughs> so he can't be the man. <laughs> he can't be the man. And nobody's going to buy him being the man. Here's the thing. If someone's going to be the new tribal chief, and it's not Dwayne Johnson, it's not Roman Reigns, it's not Jacob Fatu, I'm not watching anymore. I don't know who's going who's going to be because the the Rock has got history legacy and he's always been a fairly good talker. Roman Reigns is pretty. Yeah, that's what he's got yeah. going for him. He, he's pretty. Sokoa, he needs to be like <laughs> he need to be like Brown. <laughs> no, he can't. He, he, for he, y'all that don't know, Ali Sadiq <laughs> did Domino Effect Four. And he talked about this dude named Brown. Dude. And he's a he's a bodybuilding guy six, in prison. Eight. Six eight and, and huge and ripped. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. If if he's not gonna be 
fairly entertaining or electrifying like The Rock. And he ain't pretty like Roman Reigns. He need to be a monster, and Soko is not a monster. So what's he got? What's he got? He's got blonde mohawk. <laughs> this is how you bury somebody, everybody. <laughs> it's what he got. This is how you bury somebody. Polly, you know, he does his best. He be cowering and whimpering and pissing himself. Yeah, but... Polly's not a fighter. Sokoa is. So yeah, there so you it go. makes sense, but... Yeah. Hey, Nobody else is cowering. I'm gonna t- let me let me go ahead. And let, me, let, let me tell you what everybody else is really thinking. All right. <laughs> what? Ain't no way in hell Sakoa can whoop Tomatonga's ass. Oh no. Ain't no way in hell he. And look, Tomatonga he looked menacing, but the truth is Tonga Loa is the crazy one. Tonga Loa is the crazy one, and and and. Tama Tonga is a, a technical monster. Tama Tonga <laughs> can't. A, no, Tama Tonga can't. He'll get, he'll get into a fight with anybody. Yeah. He'll 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 jump right in. He's like, there's a fight happening. I'll be there. I ain't going on wrestling personality. I'm talking about him. I'm talking about him. But you, Tonga you, Loa is the guy. He's the guy that's like, once you start, it's on, and it ain't on until he's done. And that that because they have uh, Tama Tonga being this wild man. We're not, not really. really get to. Oh, he stopped that. No, it, the man is in there with great technical skill and talking about how much of a savage he is, how violent, okay, and how brutal. I'm like, the man is doing very technical stuff. So in he's the doing ring. his technical repertoire. He's being himself. All right. <laughs> he's stupid. Vertical suplex. He's just a savage. <laughs> That, that's what goes on. <laughs> I'm like, he's not living up to your commentary right about he's now. He's just a savage. You guys got eyeballs and having drinks, huh? Okay. I'm sitting, next time, next SmackDown, you'll, you'll see. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> okay, so next we get an epic package on Jay Uso who takes the moniker of main event. So he's the main event. Okay. okay. And his name, and this means... He has to be so good that if he doesn't close the show, he has to steal the show. That's that's what you when you call yourself the main event. You, yeah, you know, if you ain't main event, you need to steal the show. But go go ahead. They girl. went through this whole package. I thought he was about to wrestle. Honestly. Yes, I was by the end of it. I was feeling. I was like, okay, we go see him wrestle. Let's see what he do. Like, like come on, Jay, show. let's go, let's go. Come on out. <laughs> Next is your women's tag team title triple threat match. <laughs> he did not even appear on the show. I was like, there's six people out here now. One of them looked like Jay. Talk Uso. about a failed gasm. I was like, what? Is, what was this? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. It's premium live event. It's a plea, dude. It's a plea. So oh, man. we get to that. There's a women's tag team title. It's a triple threat match. So it's oh. um, <laughs> Isla Dawn and Alba Fire versus Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler or Baszler versus the champions Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. And I'm like, I don't care, but I'm going to miss something if I don't watch. So, I watched. I was not, in, I wrote, I was not interested in this match, but Cedra found it fun. They did the corner multi-stack suplex and powerbomb thing. Bianca did a superplex and damn near landed on her head. Good thing she got shoulder blades in training. Because mm-hmm. it, it was weird. You saw her bending back and bending back. I was like, do you know when to let go of this woman? Yeah. And then she just, her body said, I can snap in half or you can, <laughs> or we can fall like this. <laughs> so Jade tries to hop over the top rope on a hot tag and slipped epically. And you can hear the crowd, oh, you get everybody, oh, we was like, oh, but she recovered well. I was like, oh, poor Jade. I yeah. felt bad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and you know what? Here's, here's what you call love and respect, y'all. Here's love and respect. No one shouted, you, you fucked, fucked up. up. Nobody did. They fe- Oh, they felt bad for her. And she got in the ring and she kept working. All right, then we're going to do something She got else. up, let's do it. Yep. She got, she, that's what she, that's being a professional. You might slip and fall, get up and get started. Mm-hmm. Just get up and get started, hit your shit, make them forget. That's it. 
She did great. Jay tried to do a power bomb after kicking off one of the opponents, and but she slipped again. Yeah, I said she may have slipped. To me, it looked like she ill timed the flow from the kick into the power bomb. It looked like that right foot slip. She may not have the something on something about maybe something about her boots. I don't know. It could be boots, it could be moisture, it could be uh anything. It could be a multitude of things. Um she won't be the only one to slip tonight. But it you know, sometimes humidity or they didn't wipe down the ring ropes or something. Who knows? But the coverings could be too slick. It could be. Yeah. Uh, Bianca did a Scorpio splash landing with knees on the back of somebody. It was somebody who just landed on the back. I was like, she left a little too far with that. Mm -hmm. Jade and Bianca hit their finish, and as Jade went for the cover, she was pulled off by uh, Alba Fire, who got the pin, and the Scottish team became the champs. All right, so now I can I can talk. Um, said I was having fun with this. To a certain degree, I was, because it was like you got a match between a set of Rottweilers against a set of Dragonflies and a, a set of Mayflies. See, I and, got notes. And they're just, oh, okay, I'm, 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 I'll be quick then. And they just keep flying at the dogs, <laughs> getting swatted. The other two teams barely did anything. Even when they got rid of the champs and it was just one-on-one -on -one tag team, they barely did anything. And then the ones who won barely did anything. You know, all they did is basically get dressed and get cheered and get belts. That's it. Yeah. Go ahead. And I said, I wish I could say I didn't see this coming. <laughs> because it was like, oh, guess where we are? You know, guess, guess, guess where WWE went? Guess what team is in here? And then as Cedra said during the first half of this match, these two teams look like extras in the Jade and Bianca show. Yeah, yes. Thank you for reminding me of that. That's exactly what it looked like because they were just standing there watching them be great. They were in there living their best wrestling lives, looking good, posing down, kicking ass, working hard, slipping, recovering. Damn near breaking necks, breathing hard, and these two chicks, they, 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 they take it. They take the belts. The fans chant, they deserve it. <laughs> they do. But who, deserve, but who doesn't deserve whatever it is these days? Every, everyone that wins something deserves it. You know, you, you, Okada shows up in a car that was gifted to him. You deserve you it. Deserve Someone it. wins a belt. You deserve it. They just, they just. I swear they chanted, you deserve it when Sting retired. He deserved to retire. It's like, everyone deserves it. Yeah, they don't know. Alba and Isla got pink flowers and presented the titles. And there we go. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't do shit. Nope. They weren't out of breath. Makeup wasn't smeared. Hair wasn't out of place. Mm-mm. They were fun. They got in the ring posing like, yeah, we worked hard. We look good. If anything, the, the former champs, what they really lost would be Jay losing some pride through her slippage and whatnot. But that's about it. So. And she was trying, she wasn't trying to swan dive into the ring. Her foot just, 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 I'm going to just be right here on the rope. That's all that was. I'm just going to. I'm going to leap over this. I'm going to hot No, tag. she was trying to swan dive. You think so? Yeah. Jade shouldn't be swan diving. No, nah, she shouldn't. She should never be swan diving. So she really jumped up there with both hands like that. And not and, and, and both feet. Yeah. She wasn't just trying to jump over. She was trying to swan dive. No, Jay should never be trying to swan dive. She's not a swan diver. She ain't got that kind of body. She she don't she don't need to be swan diving. There's a lot of things that folks with certain kinds of bodies don't need to be doing, but Jade is going to swan dive. Jade is going to have to work on her ab flexibility, because a swan dive is two things. You need to get your you need to be able to curl up 
All right, get your chin to your crotch. Get your knees to the back of your head. If you can't do that, don't be swan diving. I mean, that's the idea. It ain't what they actually do. But I'm just saying, that's those are the things you have to try to do mm -hmm. if you're going to want to swan dive with no issue. If she hadn't slipped, I, I think she would have done it. She might have done it. I would have been like, and I would know what I would have said. She don't need to do that no more. Mm -hmm. She don't need to do that. Or I would have just been like, okay, she made it. Cool. Stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would have been it. Just cool. Okay, stop. Um, then we get static message. Okay, this is the intercontinental title. This is Chad Gabriel versus Sami Zayn. It says this is it's Chad Gabriel. See, it's it's better that way. Chad, damn woman. <laughs> <laughs> he should have told a different first name. Static message shows up on the screen. You were warned, told to prepare. You will behold. The massacre is coming. And all I could think was, Hell, Contra! That's all I could think. <laughs> and there was an emblem with a raven. But I was like, man, Hell, Contra! Like, oh, snap! That's all I could think. Yeah. That's all I could think. That's the way Contra operated in the did Those little staticky messages yeah. and whatnot. In the middle of the show. And they've been doing these staticky messages for quite a bit now. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's been going on for a bit. What, since the word came down by Jacob Fatu? Honestly, yeah. Ah. Maybe a smidge before that. Like, I don't know, man. Samuel, it's, it's, it, it seems to be his thing. But if then he, later in life, she find out, oh, no, it was this person's idea to do it, yada, yada, yada. But anyway. He's a fantastic talker. Yes. He's a great wrestler, too. But, man, that man can talk. <laughs> that man could talk some serious that shit. That man could talk some serious shit. That, that's, that's a movie quote from Morgan Freeman. Mm -hmm. um, and it's Unleashed, if you want to know the movie. Damn good movie. Damn good movie. Damn good movie, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm okay, good, okay. Damn good movie. <laughs> All I could think after seeing that even was Hail Contra. The fans chant Sami Zayn. In a musical way while jumping up and down. Sammy, Sammy, Zane. They ain't jumping Sammy, up and down, right? I was like, let me tell Sammy, you something, Zane. Glasgow, Scotland. You are not Leon France. And you need to back off of trying. Leon worked hard on the football field for ages. And all you've done is try to copy them at all fronts. All right? Be AJ and just quit already. Yeah. All right? Quit. None of you out there is going to beat Leon Fronts. It ain't happening. Quit it. Be you, but don't try to be them. Be the best you that you can be, and I'll probably like you, but stop trying to copy who already set the standard of epicness. It's over. Leon Fronts won. Damn it. He'll promo over. Uh -huh. Now... <laughs> After a game of cat and mouse, Sammy stands next to Otis. Oh, y'all, this is Cedar's first time seeing uh, Chad Gable in action. All right. We're going to get into it. And if you, <laughs> and, and, and Zimbo, you're probably like, man. And yeah, we got your comments, but we're going to do that separate of this show. That's yeah. what I think we're going to do. We're going to be mad, Zimbo. You have to be mad. <laughs> we're going to be mad. Sammy stands next to Otis and the fans go nuts. Okay, nice. Back in the ring, Sammy's arms get worked on. Sammy had to force Gable backwards over the rope because he, you know, tried to close line over the rope. But Gable was just kind of, okay, I'm here. And Sammy's like, get over, get over. He's like, you got to force my, my clavicle, my clavicle. And Gable's doing his best to work his arm, trying to get his body up and over. It was a mutual attempt at what his body was trying to get him to not do. It was it was funny to me at the moment, but I had to write, even though I was almost breaking my cheeks laughing. Um, but they got him over to the floor. They got it. They made it. They got this. They got the area. So now they on the floor. Um, then later, Sammy does a backflip off the top rope onto Gable, who had. Half stepped away because Sammy was going to fully miss. All right. This is outside the ring. They Sammy, I don't know why he do the little seated backflip off the top rope. He was going to miss. Absolutely, thoroughly miss. Sammy was able to get just a little bit of his shoulder in the way. You know, 
Well, hold up. Yeah. Sammy, it, 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 it was bad. But it, later, Sammy hit a single arm Michinoku driver for a two count. Okay. So that move still, even in WWE, don't get a win. Gable hit a diving headbutt for a two count. Sammy hit a half Nelson suplex for a two count. Gable applied a cross face and then Sammy reversed into one of his own, only for Gable to reverse that and to apply the ankle lock. Sammy eventually rolls it into a, a roll up for a two count. Chad rolls from the ring and gets the belt, handing it to Maxine. And my note was, we think Max will hit Chad at some point. I knew she wasn't going to do it. I was thinking, not like I turn on you, but more like, you know, the Miss Q thing. That's I, what I, I thought. I, I, I didn't think she was going to hit nobody. And that was going to be a problem. And you were right. <laughs> with the ref distracted, Max could not hit Sammy with the belt. After Chad argues, Sammy tries to rush with the boot kick, but that looked like a fully missed time moment because you didn't want to you didn't want to hit Maxine in the corner and whatnot. Chad hit Chaos Theory for a questionable two count. Yeah, because he hit that bam one, two, and it was like it was so deep. He he stopped his hand upon the motion to kick out, but not the kick out. It was gorgeous. That cast there was gorgeous. Chad leaves the ring to browbeat Max, but Otis stands in the way to a major pop. Sammy flips over the ropes, hitting Otis. Chad kind of tried to push Otis in the way, but Otis is a big dude. Chad dives with the moonsault onto both of them. Chad had the ankle lock on Sammy a little bit later on. Over the outside railing, but Sammy threw him off, and Chad chop blocked Max Maxine's <laughs> bad leg. It oh, looked good. It looked, it looked he good. Chopped the hell out of her, and, and she sold it phenomenally. <laughs> Otis is t- Otis is ticked, and Chad enters the ring to get away. On the floor, Sammy and Max hold their legs. They hold their legs, writhing in pain. <laughs> It looks like, I ain't gonna, it's like a small little war zone. So yep. that's, that's good. And Maxine tries to get up on a good leg and it don't work and she drops <laughs> She drops back to the floor holding bad leg. Otis you know, plans when to the strike. Bad, when the bad leg is messed up, the good leg don't want to work either. <laughs> and trust, I know. It, it's weird. One leg affects the other. Your shoulder affects both legs. Yep. Sammy plans to strike Otis plans to strike Sammy, and I keep saying, I say it's Sammy, but I keep thinking Wavara, <laughs> but it needs to be Zane in my head. Um, Otis plans to strike Sammy, but Max waves him off, and then she falls to the floor, which is what she was talking about. <laughs> Otis carries her off while Chad yells at them only to catch a boot kick and get pinned. No, oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> this was a very long two-star match. It was. Cedra believes Chad is related to Kurt Angle somewhere or somehow. Somehow, man. I don't know if Kurt, like, 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 had an encounter with a high school sweetheart or, or something. It's 17 years between them. It's possible. He looks like a mini Kurt. I was a, I was a fan. I, I was a fan of Kurt Angle. Oh, when she he first the, hit loved the, the hell WWE. out of some Kurt Angle. I was a fan. This dude moves just like the man they're both olympians it's a thing oh my goodness and even in his face a facial expression i'm like come on man what what (laughs) (laughs) come on somebody's got a skeleton in your closet (laughs) after this because this was a very spectacular performance on chad i said okay i gotta do this so I use what uh, the uh, the match that Zimbo wanted me to watch. So I had Cedra watch Chad versus Walter um, for Raw on the Intercontinental match where Walter retained his title and exceeded the Honky Tonk Man his reign. And what what were your thoughts on that compared to what you did see of Chad? So. Chad didn't really show what he could do in this match with Sammy. Um, 
and the, as you said, that 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 Chad Gunther match should have been a pay per view match. It shouldn't have been just a regular show. Chad Gable is really really good, and I don't understand why he's a mid card drama act. I don't. I, I'm sorry. I do understand. He's small. Yeah. That's it. It's because he's small. If he were as tall and jacked as Kurt Angle eventually became, you know, and Kurt Angle stepped into the WWE because of his Olympic success, the difference between being an Olympian and then having the success that Kurt Angle had as an Olympian is two different things. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So he was able to step into the WWE and be a main dude and I I don't it almost they made it look like Stephanie was really pushing him. You remember it that? Did, yes. It re- that he was re- that that and then he eventually, you know, found his own and he got big the way WWE wants you to be. Yada yada. Uh Yeah, and then he sl- left WWE and got small. Yeah. They uh-huh. are sleeping. Uh, on Chad Gable and I don't anticipate knowing WWE and a lot of how they operate has not changed <laughs> I don't think they're going to wake up he's just going to keep having the job out to lesser individuals and do a bunch of bull Chad Gable and Kurt Angle need to get blood tests <laughs> yeah they need um, to get blood it's, 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 too, it's, it's, it's too, too close. uncanny it's uncanny. If they're they not, if they're not related, the then. same. How how can you program your body to move the same? I can see perfecting someone's move, like for example, ah, oh, dude, the professional. What's his name? Rhett 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 Titus. Yeah, he does that belly to belly suplex, just like Magnum T. A. And you called it out precisely. I can see perfecting a move. Like you've seen it done. That's one thing. But not someone's posture. Not the way they walk and move around. Not. What? That's different. That's. that's <laughs> <don't> Honestly. <laughs> Olympians. Greco-Roman. And, and amateur style wrestling and whatnot. They are all trained to move that way. They are. I'm going to give them that. I'm going to give it that. You can. If you go back and watch Rick and Scott Steiner, well, mainly Scott, if you watch them and you, you watch Scott in his younger days, he moves like he was moving like that. He was moving just like that. It, you'd be like, OK, that's that's uncanny. You know, <laughs> you notice that. Uh, and that's that's a, a, another with extreme or strong at not say minimum strong amateur style wrestling skills they tend to move like that the thing is you develop your own personality while moving like that and chad gable's personality is within that and that's why she's saying that because it ain't just moving like that it's little idiosyncrasies while moving like that that makes it your own and his own is is like kurt's Mm -hmm. they're just little things certain shaking of the hand the extreme readiness of the face, the way he look up, the same intensity in the eyes. When he decides to put the straps down. And then pull them back up. I've seen Kurt do that quite a few times. It's uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. But he's good. He's really good. Like I said, if I had my own promotion, Chad would have been like top guy, top billing. And I'm like... Not because he reminds me of Kurt Angle... Just remove Kurt Angle from it. The guy is thorough. Yeah. Just just great. That ankle lock should have won the match and taken the title. Over and over again instead of having to draw, to, to lose to a boot kick. Yeah. A boot kick. He did that kick and then he didn't kick out. I'm like, that's, that's what we've been waiting for. We've been waiting this long ass match. For Sami Zayn to do a goddamn boot kick? Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't even a good one. It was. It wasn't a pump kick. It was just. It was a Minoru Suzuki running boot to the corner. He opens his matches with it. <laughs> 
Yep. And you think that got CJ annoyed. Our next match, women's title. Piper Neven oh, versus Bailey. Just hell. Early on, Chelsea Green jaw jacks the referee and nudges him. That's put putting her hands on little, little Nate. Nate. Put her hands on him. Don't nobody remember. Don't nobody remember little Nate, but that's <laughs> God damn it. That's little Nate, man. That's Charles. That's little Nate. Charles, little Nate Robinson. That's who that is. <laughs> And he ejects her from the arena. Yep. And I like how he shouts, I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So Piper, she controls most of the match with heavy splashes and small kicks. <laughs> Actually, I think that was the whole match. That was the whole match. At one point, Bailey smacks her hip. And then does a suicida. I don't get that shit at all. <laughs> you gonna smack your hip? I was like, okay, a hip attack of some kind. No, she just dove and pushed her off. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell was that? <sighs> I, I thought that was just so stupid. And then she just says, this match is like two folks trying to wrestle a bale of hay. <laughs> so yeah, you know, I wrote that down. I wrote that down. I'm typing over here so much. She don't know what I'm taking from her. It, it was, man. That was terrible. Bailey hit a diving elbow drop for a two count, and it's her first true offensive move. And this was like way later in the match. Piper pulls a Samoa a Samoa Joe combo with the corner counter sambo slam, and then the running senton for a two count. Uh, the fans chant for Piper the heel, but she's not been a heel in this match nope. so far, at least. Nope, no heel. So that was kind of all. lost. Yep, none at all. Bailey uh, catches Piper up top. Piper has to turn and slam herself. Yep. Chelsea runs back out after being ejected, and Bailey beats her uh, down before getting back into the ring. Bailey just went out there and just, just beat her ass down, which was yep. good. Bailey, the barricade. Bailey catches a Michinoku driver two from Piper for a two count when two it, sh it should have ended the match. For a two count. It was not just a Michinoku driver two. But it was a heavy set drive. If a two. woman twice your size drives you into the mat neck first, You're you done. need to stay down. Yep. Keep your words down. <laughs> <laughs> Outside, Piper counters a charge with a boss man slam. Uh, and it was a good one. It was good. On the outside for nothing. Bailey goes for the crucifix, but it's blocked. And then Piper has to leap back mm -hmm. so Bailey can get the, the crucifix bomb for the three count. Uh -huh. This is what WWE will go through so a big girl can't be champion over someone she should have killed inside of seven minutes. Absolutely abysmal. Cole calls a cru crucifix bomb a unique move. That fucking idiot. It That's was absolutely abysmal. This woman, she's a big woman. She should have been not physically throwing her weight around doing scent time. She should have been shutting this little tiny ass girl down. And she's supposed to be a heel. There was no healdom. All there was was a move. Ugh, I'm so tired. Let me throw my hair out the way. Now, hold up. I want y'all to know straight up. I don't take anything from Bailey. Because Bailey made Piper look good. She did. But Piper had to do her best to make Bailey look good. So they literally worked together. They did what they had to do to get the match the way the match was supposed to go. They did that. I don't blame Piper. I don't blame Bailey. I blame Paul Levesque. Which I still think is a very goddamn marketable name. He should have went with that instead of Hunter Hearst Helmsley or Triple H. Too. It looks like Piper should have beaten Bailey easily. What they should have done is let Piper be a heel and be a strong woman and beat Bailey's ass and actually make this happy face uh, champion 
work and come back and win. She would have looked better that way. She should have got her ass stomped and then logically come back. You know, you're wrestling the big person. What are you going to do? Take out some knees. Mess up the legs. You know, make it look like your champion is a thinking champion. No. I wrote, I'll call bullshit my, song and dance. I wrote, I'll call myself out on this. I was annoyed because I'm, I'm not going to sit here and contradict myself and just browbeat anyone doing it and then you know and no i did it myself so i'm just gonna be forthcoming all right i said i'll call myself out on this i was annoyed at the very thought of another homeland person winning a title and yet after seeing this match it would have been best because the way this looked bailey shouldn't have won because it makes it look like piper can't take damage from someone a third her size I just knew Piper was going to win. I was like, okay, it's hometown thing. All right. Of course, because of me and the way I think, it, it, I forgot this is WWE. She's a big woman. She's not going to win. So I forgot that. Yep. My bad for being decent. To be blunt. To be blunt, not mean. Just blunt for the people out there that don't know how to hear other words of decency. WWE is not going to let a fat girl win the title because she's not presentable to the public. It's that simple. But, you know, we were trying to be really nice and decent about it. Say a big girl or someone larger and stuff because that's literally what it is. She is a big girl. She is someone larger. And she's a big, she's a big woman, but I saw a lot of agility. Yeah, I so just... I saw a great deal of agility. She moves very well in the ring. Yes. She knows her craft. She just wasn't able to show it appropriately. And she did all the damn work. And when the match was over, she won't suck and win. Her cardio's good. That was a long match, and she was in charge of that whole match. They should have let her be a damn monster. Yep. That's what they should have done with Niven. And she shouldn't be Piper Niven. She should be Niven. I'd be all right with that. Yeah. She should have been a monster. Next, we get, and I say it this way, the Raw World Heavyweight title. And this is, uh, yeah, this is your main event. So this is your main event of the evening. Echoes, everybody. Echoes. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So due to McIntyre's victory, and this is my first, this is my first time really seeing Drew McIntyre in action. Damian Priest, I watched him back in Ring of Honor and whatnot. Punishment Martinez. That was a much better name. Punishment Martinez. But he moves better now. He's bigger. He moves better. He's a he's, he's he was a pretty boy then. He's a beautiful guy now. He's more ba he's balanced in his size now because his his upper body was too big when he was Punishment Martinez. He was, yeah, he was, yeah, he had a little thing going. He had put uh, upper body was uh, too big. Edge when, when he returned. And his legs were too small. And something was up with him when he walked. Like he had, his, like his, the soles of his boots were too thick or something. It was weird. But he's got it together now. Man, only if WWE was smart enough to get a hold of his sister, bring her in, be a part of the Judgment Day, and then she go after the women's belt and she just be dominant. because oh, she just be dominant. Because she is that damn good. She is that damn good. I damn near call her a ring general. Mercedes. Martinez. Or, this is what would her name be? Mercedes Priest? I don't know. But she's not a girly girl. Not by a damn sight. She ain't going to do that mean girl stuff. <laughs> nope. She, 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 talk, she talk like a dude. I ain't talking about sounding. I'm talking about she, she don't say little flowery nice words and do the mean girl high school thing. I just want you to know that we were really upset with what you did last night with the title match. <laughs> I don't give a great goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> mean Stupid girl shit. stuff. If y'all do that kind of promo, y'all dumb as shit. I'm just no. I'm, I'm not even gonna. I, I know this. I know this turns people off. But if you gonna do promos like Mean Girls, you do not get my approval. Mm -mm. No, I was like, you know what? We didn't like how you jumped her last week. Like, I don't give a shit. I don't know that. You gonna really hate what I do this week? For real. <laughs> What the fuck about your opinion? I'm gonna jump if you ain't going to do something, then be gone. And I'm going to jump you. How about that? There you go. 
I don't like what you did her last night. Pow! How about what I did to you today, right now? How about <laughs> Do you hate that? Because if not, I got more. <laughs> So anyway, due to McIntyre's victory, the Judgment Day is barred from ringside and thus can't aid Damian Priest. So it's Drew McIntyre versus Damian Priest, Priest being the champion. Drew's entrance was deafening as the fans popped for him giving, uh, for him giving his autograph, holding up the flag, and boasting in the ring. Drew, was, Drew has everything in his corner to win. He has the massive babyface push, the fans glued to his side, the road to claiming what was taken from him, his wife's letter on his gear due to her not being there via illness. The only thing he's missing is the win in the final match. And he had bagpipes. And if y'all won't feel what I just said, then y'all ain't wrestling fans because that was good. He had he had bagpipes. He had a bagpipe He had the bagpipe band, people. And they were clean, man. They had the kilts on and all the little doodads hanging and and they were playing the bagpipes and there was somebody walking out with this big stick like a majorette and then there was the ones in the back with the drums that were twirling these the, 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 it was it was something if there was <laughs> dust in that arena it won't on them it won't on them they were clean clean cleaner than clean there are suits out there that are jealous of these people they had their bagpiping together they wait for the fans to calm just a bit before bringing out priests and even with Priest's intro, the fans try to drown it out. Mm -hmm. But Priest looked good on his intro. He did. I was like, that's a champion right there, y'all. That's a champion. And that belt looks awesome. Yeah. It ain't great, but it's, it's awesome. It's far better than everybody else is carrying around a big-ass stupid W on it. <laughs> <laughs> Upon Priest's ring intro, he turns from Drew to raise his belt and hands on the intro, but Drew gets right in his face to an enormous cheer. The fans roar like crazy and upon lockup, they go silent with deep anticipation and focus. Early on, McIntyre um, hits a Topic Conhiro that ended in a accidental guillotine drop. <laughs> Drew hit a nice sit out body slam for a two count. The fans chant, Fuck him up, Drew. Fuck him up. Then that stopped quickly. And commentary, every time the fans get a little like that, even on SmackDown, they, the fans and their, their words, and the fans are a little vocally rowdy today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I, I enjoy that part. I, mean, I have nothing. I don't, I don't know what you can say on commentary about that other than, ah, oh, crap. Y'all don't get <laughs> kicked off TV. Damien tried to double jump Kunhiro, but got caught up in the ropes upside down by his ankle. I mean, we watching it. It's almost hard to see how it happened. Just it was. It's a um, Damien was forced to drop on his shoulder on the apron, but didn't seem to be phased by that. At least the shoulder, anyway. Yeah. Damien has hit that move countless times in his career. It was simply a mistake. It wasn't a botch. It wasn't a fuck up or nothing. It won't like that. It was a mistake. Just weird shit happens. I think it was the ropes. It might have been. It might have been. Um, I, I, I saw a thing. It was a picture when I was trying to find the graphic for this, um, and it said Damian Priest on his knee injury. And I was like, okay, it's amazing, everybody. You know, yeah, his ankle got caught up, but if you've ever had an ankle lock placed on you, your ankle's taking some damage, but you feel that right up under the patella. You feel it. I know. <laughs> It's bad. That's that's more of a knee. It's more of a knee lock than anything. In any case, uh, Drew expertly started kicking the hell out of Damien uh, to the fans' delight, which was good because it was a screw up. You know, it just happened. It's, you know, it was a mistake, but you can see that he was concerned, but he had to pull it back. Yeah, it's like okay, I got to take advantage. I can't just let him get undone. I, you know, I got to take advantage. Of, it's a fight. Mm -hmm. He so he he did what he had to do. And they did some talking, trying to, you know, see where Damien was. You can see him locking up and talking. Um, you know, like, can you keep going? Do we got to cut this short? You know, we got a lot of air time left. You know, I think they had like 12 or 13 minutes left. It's like, you know, it's, it's a lot. Um, Damien's leg was strangled between two steel cables, and he was feeling it. Drew hit a butterfly DDT for a two count. Priest flips off the fans, which was good, 
going up top, but he got caught there. Priest uh, wiggled free, and then he did a single leg crucifix bomb. They call the razor's edge. Nice, but for a two count. Again, the fans are live. They are up. They are up. They cheering, but they're not Leon fronts. You're never going to be that. Yeah. You're never going to get it. You are, what did Kevin Hart say? You are cheese without the corners. You'll never be a slice. <laughs> so, <laughs> the two, okay, Priest and McIntyre, they do a very, I, know, I do not like it. This is a really poor strike exchange on their knees. Oh, yeah. And they take forever. So, it's like, I'm waiting for you to hit me. I'm waiting for you to hit me. They get up. They do a hockey fight. And then go back and forth with the elbows. Priest hit two tornado kicks okay two two tornado kicks beautifully done why is that not a finishing kick but he's reeling from the pain in his foot i'll give it that maybe didn't hit him as hard yada yada i'll go with that as a fan i'll go with that his foot hurt he was afraid to hit him full force okay fine the third tornado kick, though, that missed. And Priest got dropped with a sleeper slam. Cool. Then we're late in the match. It's, they, they're tired, right? Mm -hmm. But Drew, he, he hulks up. I was like, ah, crap. He does, a, he does a kip up, and he readies his kick, but Priest rolls from the ring. Drew hits the finishing kick, and Priest is put through the barricade. Yay, they got the video game spot. In the ring, Priest closes the gap of one of the kicks and hits the sit-out choke slam for a two count, which they call South of Heaven choke slam. The fans come up, though, because, you know, their hero kicked out. Priest hit a super Frankenstein, and Drew comes back with a shining black that he calls the Claymore kick for a two count. Chono Masahiro. It's a boot. It's a boot kick. Yep, and I'll let you, I'll let, you know what, before I go on with this, because I got to know, well, um, well, honestly, on, when he got kicked, Priest, he felt like a, felt like a dead body. He did, he, he sold it well. I did, I didn't type it well, so on my note it says, Priest feels like a dead body. <laughs> uh, maybe he did. <laughs> we have to ask McIntyre. <laughs> yeah, don't ask me, I don't know how dead bodies feel. I don't, I don't. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. It's like sexually, it's just something about dead people when they don't respond to you. Uh, not just <laughs> it's a turn off, you know. Any kind of way, yeah. And it's scary to think that they might respond. So you just don't you kind of you yeah. don't want to test those waters. <laughs> don't walk around you, talking to the dead. I don't know what y'all necrophiliacs be doing. It must be the the rush. Oh shit! So, <laughs> <you> just, <laughs> the hell. <laughs> so. <laughs> It was a boot, man. Just a boot kick. Right? It was a boot kick. Yeah, he he jumped and you know it was a boot kick. I don't. I, don't, <laughs> I just don't understand it. I just it's I just don't understand it. And this is it. I'm like this is what what I've been waiting to see. I never seen this dude wrestle. I ain't know what his finisher was. A boot. That's what's been getting the job done. Claymore is a sword, everybody. It's a boot. Two-handed sword. I mean, at least if you if if Claymore is gonna be your thing, your moniker, your symbol, your yada yada. Nice lariat, maybe. Yeah, everyone does a lariat. You know, swinging double axe handle. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna tell you why I don't mind so much the boot kick and take a flat back bump. It's safe. Yes, Damien Priest has a very unsafe finisher because he's dropping down on his hip. That's spinal compression. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, he chooses to do that, though. We know that the, the, the choke slam is accomplishable without doing that. Yeah, but you also want to do the choke slam in a way that gets people feeling that is worthy of a finishing move because everyone does the choke slam, but who does it that way? You know, I would rather have seen him, if he could do it, do the choke slam where he takes a flat back bump, save his spine, save his hip. You know, because he keep doing that, you know, once, like two to three times a week. And that's 
that's just bad. You know, mm -hmm. he's going to need hip replacement. So now um, we get to epic spot. This right here is like we, we, we're we trying to bring it home, everybody, okay? It's that time of the match. We're trying to bring it home. And plus, we are out into this anyway. Uh, Drew shoves Priest into the corner where the ref is. And the ref speedily dives out of the way just in the nick of time. And I mean, he got his ass out of there. He now, this means that any ref squished in the corner exposes the business more. This isn't the first time we've seen this in pro wrestling. And then I wrote, too, th too soon for my thoughts, LOL. The ref was holding his ankle, climbed back, onto the, uh, climbed back up onto the apron to enter the ring where Priest is shoved into the corner and thus the ref knocking him from the apron to the railing. So my prediction, now Drew can get the Claymore kick and cover for many counts and the Judgment Day can run in and, and get beat down a little bit before overtaking McIntyre who fights back and then win it all. And the count, then, then, then we got uh, the counter kick with the power bomb from Pete, not Peace, but Priest. Uh, I know words. And then uh, the evasion and choke slam by Priest. Okay. Claymore kick and cover to many counts. The ref runs in. What? One, two, and stops. And I was like, okay, which one of the Judgment Day is this? That's what I was thinking. And then it, span, it, it spins around. I got the, man, I, saucers on my eyes. I was like, what? It's CM Punk who is more than happy to screw him over at this point. Mm -hmm. This most epic moment in the match. And Punk's just like, it's two. Yep. <laughs> it's two. Drew goes after Punk. <laughs> Punk has been messing with him. Punk has been messing with him for a very long time. Tom, Punk is a little pesky ass rat. Mess with, I don't mean rat like the wrestling term. I mean like an actual rat just gnawing at you and stuff. Drew gets, goes after Punk. And just started strangling him. Yep, just got him. Got him. He's got him. Punk low blows him and mushes him away to many jeers. So, Priest hits the finisher and slowly covers Drew for the three count. The fans hate Punk, but those close enough was loving up on him. Like, man... I see a punk. Get yourself. They would get the selfie. It was a couple of dudes just had punk. They just had him. Yep. <laughs> just holding on to him. Fist bumps and everything. He's smiling. And Cedra says, everyone loves Drew McIntyre, but hey, it's a punk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, the dude that is the heel is getting love. Okay. So. <laughs> when is CM Punk going to come back to Glasgow? Screw that, man. You might see Drew walking down the street one day, but not, <laughs> not, not see him. Not, not with his WWE schedule. You ain't going to see Drew ever. Yeah. But not see him pup. <laughs> so that, 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 that's going to do it. That's how that show ended, and that's how ours ended. So this has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on WWE's Clash at the Castle in Glasgow, Scotland, their premium live event. And with that, we want you all to be good, be chill, be safe, and we'll see you next time. Damn boot kicks. <laughs>